Welcome to the start of a series of videos where I run the 6500 XT, the world's slowest graphics card with ray tracing support, through a series of gruelling challenges. In this video I'll be playing Quake 2 RTX. On the surface, it doesn't sound too demanding. After all, Quake 2 could run on a PlayStation 1. But the twist here is that it's fully ray traced. There are some games with ray traced reflections or lighting, but this is the real deal. Everything's fully path traced. And despite it having RTX in the name, which is an Nvidia brand name for their ray traced and AI based effects, AMD cards can also run this title. These are the settings I used, and this is how the 6500 XT fared at full 1080p resolution. 20 FPS at best, but often dropping a frame or two lower than that. I think it performed better than I had been expecting, but it is of course still nowhere near playable. So I dropped the resolution to lower than 1080p, relying on upscaling to keep the image looking acceptable. There will be a point where this game becomes smooth and playable. The question is, what will it look like in that state? Setting it to target 30fps, it dropped the resolution to 75% scaling, which softens the image a bit and blobs the textures, but I still think it looks reasonable. I never know if 75% scaling refers to one dimension or to the total pixel count, but from the look of it I feel like it's scaling along one dimension, which would put the resolution here to around 1440 by 810 Please correct me if I'm wrong about this, not that it matters since we only really need to care about the resulting visual quality and frame rate. But I still wouldn't want to play this game at 30fps, and despite 30 and 60 making logical sense on a 60hz screen, I still see value to increments between these, as they do still noticeably improve the feel beyond 30fps. From past experience I would call 40fps minimum playable for me, and 50fps actually becomes quite enjoyable to play on in all but the most twitch shootery of titles, which unfortunately Quake 2 kind of is. But if I target 40fps, it looked like this and set the image scaling to around 63%. It certainly looked and felt a lot more fluid than at 30fps, but it was still obvious that it wasn't hitting 60. Next I tried targeting 50fps, which dropped the image scaling only slightly more down to the low to mid 50s, but the experience felt distinctly smoother than it did at 40fps. Personally, this is how I'd play Quake 2 RTX on this card. I consider it to be the sweet spot of performance and image quality. Hitting the magical 60fps mark was a possibility, but was the point where I felt the image quality was beginning to degrade substantially. I'd still happily play the game like this, but I would understand people who wouldn't. I mean you're getting the pretty ray traced effects and lighting, but everything is beginning to be covered in a layer of blobby Vaseline, which at least makes it smooth and playable. Screw it, let's see what it looks like at 100fps. Now this really is getting soft and unclear, but it does still reach 100fps. And lastly I tried 200fps, which the 6500XT failed to reach, dropping right down to the minimum scaling of 25% and looking like ass. This is the price you pay for wanting triple digit ray tracing on a budget card. So let's return to 60fps, which by comparison looks very nice indeed, and I'll discuss what I think about the 6500XT's performance in this title. How you feel about it depends on which camp you fall into. The first camp is console gamers who resent all the generations where they were teased by PC gamers for only gaming at 30fps. Also in this camp is PC gamers who expect a graphics card, especially a new one like this one, to hit a certain resolution and frame rate in all of today's titles. If you're in that camp, then you will think that the 6500 XT is a failure for only reaching 60fps at 540p in some titles, especially in Quake 2, which was running faster than this in the 90s. Now I know I don't fall into that camp. Having followed hardware for decades, I remember that until a few years ago ray tracing was an unobtainable pipe dream that still felt like it was many years off before becoming a possibility. And yet here we are, just a few years after the first ray tracing capable cards came out, and despite graphics cards performance and price stagnating and even regressing since then, here we are playing a fully ray traced game smoothly on a £200 graphics card. Let's be real here, if you choose to play Quake 2 RTX, then you're doing so because you're curious about the ray tracing, and the 6500 XT will satisfy that curiosity, even if it isn't at 1080p. Like I was saying, I didn't have high hopes for a first gen low end AMD ray traced card with no DLSS support, and in this title it exceeded those expectations, because despite its limited textures and polygons, Quake 2 RTX is justifiably one of the most demanding titles out today. You can see the system specs used in this video's description, and you'll immediately notice I'm using an old 4-core Ryzen that's limited to PCIe 3. Is it fair to test the 6500 XT like this, when it could run substantially better with a faster processor and when on PCIe 4? Well this is what I've been debating with myself since before I even got this card. I'd argue that the 6500 XT is one of the most difficult graphics cards in the world to test, simply because it's so dependent on so many external variables, and because it's a card that will be bought for so many different reasons. 
be it to breathe life into an older system or as a stopgap in a faster one, at least until graphics card prices normalise somewhat. Which is why I opted for a video series on it, rather than just a standalone video. I intend to test this card on slow processors, fast ones, PCI 3, PCI 4, against a Radeon 480, you name it. But I figured this one would at least answer the burning questions you had about its ray tracing performance, and in a worst case scenario. So please, leave your thoughts in the comments below about how you think I should test this card, and which sort of things you'd like benchmarked on this graphics card light.